Welcome back to The Real Story. Now to one of the biggest races in Connecticut this year, U.S. Senate. GOP primary winner Leora Levy calls herself a political outsider. Levy has been a major fundraiser for the GOP, serving on the Finance Committee for the RNC. Back in 2019, former President Donald Trump nominated her as ambassador to Chile, and while she was never confirmed, Trump has now endorsed Levy in this Senate race. After beating party-endorsed Themis Claritus in the primary, she now seeks to unseat Democrat incumbent Richard Blumenthal in November. Thanks so much for being here with us today, Leora. Thank you very much for inviting me. Of course. So let's take a look back at that primary I just mentioned. You beat Themis Claritus, some calling that an upset as she was the party-endorsed favorite. Now, you've never held political office before like your uh, opponent in November, Richard Blumenthal, but what made you run and what makes you so confident you can win in November? Well, I'm running because I've never been so worried about our country. Joe Biden, supported and assisted by Dick Blumenthal, are destroying the opportunity for the American dream, for Connecticut families and for their children. I decided I could no longer stand by and let things just happen. I had to jump in to, ch to make change and to fight for Connecticut families. And with that primary that I mentioned, there was very low turnout for that election. Now, primary turnout's typically low here in Connecticut, about 30%, but this year turnout just approximately 16% total. And in your party, just about one in five Republicans turned out to vote. So how can we increase voter engagement, not just in primaries, but looking ahead to the general. Well, it's very important for people to vote. That is the way they can express themselves. That is how they decide who their leaders will be and what the policies will be going forward. So I encourage everyone of any party, unaffiliated, independents, Democrats, Republicans, please vote. Are there it any concrete ways we can get people out to vote? Well, I, 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 I can't explain, I, I can't really think of that. I, for me, it's always been a privilege to vote. There are so many countries, like the country in which I was born, Cuba, which is a communist country where their vote is meaningless because it's rigged. So it's very important for people to vote. We have that privilege. We have that responsibility as Americans to vote. So I do encourage everyone who's eligible to vote. What do you think are the top issues on voters' minds heading to the polls this November? Well, the number one issue is the economy. Life is unaffordable here in Connecticut, and that is the direct result of the failed economic policies of Joe Biden, rubber stamped by my opponent, Dick Blumenthal. And that includes the high gas prices, the high food prices. Food prices in July were up 13.1 percent, but if you look at individual items, eggs were up 32 percent. Everything is much more expensive. Parents have to make hard decisions. Do I fill my tank with four to five dollar gasoline, a gallon gasoline, or do I feed my family? And now school is starting. They've had to buy school supplies. You know, we live in the Northeast. There is a shortage of home heating oil. It's at the lowest level in, in nearly a decade. I'm very worried about people not being able to afford to heat their homes. So we, we have to stop what's happening and reverse it. How would you combat those issues like you mentioned inflation? Well, inflation is a direct result of the, the trillions of dollars of, of unnecessary, wasteful spending by the Biden administration started with last year with, with the, the $1.9 trillion, followed by $800 billion, followed by the $750 billion of the recent, what is it called? They, they call it the Inflation Reduction Act, but it does anything but reduce inflation. You don't think that's going to help bring down costs for it, Connecticut it will, families? It will worsen inflation. It will. It creates much more spending. It increases taxes on the middle class. What are they doing? Life is more is expensive enough, and they will be taxing the middle class. What what people don't realize is, besides their federal income tax going up, it will increase the tax 
attack the Connecticut income taxes because they're tied. Mm -hmm. So Blumenthal voted to increase your taxes all around. That That is very difficult in the middle of a recession. So another major issue on voters' minds nationwide, abortion access. You've said many times that you are pro-life. And if you win in November, would you support a federal abortion ban? Look, I am personally pro-life. The laws in Connecticut are enshrined, are, are in the Connecticut Constitution. There's nothing I would do on the federal level and um, frankly, I'm concerned about the children people have and whether they can feed them and whether they can clothe them and whether those children have the opportunity to live an American dream the way I have. That's my concern. That's what I'm going to Washington to fight for. So you believe Connecticut's laws and stance on abortion, you wouldn't be in interest of changing those? I'm going to be a senator in the United States Senate in Washington. I will have nothing to do with the laws in Connecticut. Okay. And you wouldn't change it on the federal level either? I'm not even going to comment about a bill that hasn't been written, hasn't been proposed. That's just pure specula speculation. So some say your endorsement by former President Donald Trump pushed you over that finish line in this primary election. How influential do you think his stamp of approval was for your win in that race? Well, I'm very grateful for his endorsement. I've received endorsements from senators and leaders from both ends of, of the spectrum of the Republican Party, including Rob Portman, including Tom Tillis, and include, including Congresswoman Maria Elvira Salazar, including Ambassador Rick Grinnell. So I've received quite a, quite a few endorsements, and I believe in a big tent. That's the way I've always approached our party, and I follow Ronald Reagan's uh, um, prescription that my 80% friend is not my 20% enemy. There are issues on which we may disagree, but I, I am Leora Levy. It's Leora Levy's name who's on the ballot, and, and that's the way I'm running. You mentioned a big tent for your party. On the flip side, a lot of Republicans have been distancing themselves from Trump recently, especially in a state like Connecticut, where he lost the 2020 presidential election here. Are you worried this might make voters from your own party look to your opponent come November? Look, the president whose name is on the ballot is Joe Biden. His policies are on the ballot, and my opponent has voted 98.1 percent with Joe Biden to, to implement those policies, and those are the policies that are making life unaffordable for Connecticut families, have increased the crime as they defunded the police, which he supported, have, have made our state a border state with an invasion at our border because they're flying illegals to Westchester County Airport and Tweed Airport. Those are the policies that are on the ballot. And that's a, and Joe Biden is a president whose name is associated with those policies. So you don't think your direct endorsement from Trump puts his name on the ballot also? No, it's Leora Levy on the ballot. Absolutely. So speaking of some of those voters, Connecticut has a large block of independent and unaffiliated voters here in Connecticut. So obviously you won the Republican primary where only those registered voters can, can vote, but now in the general November everyone can vote. So how are you going to win over those independent and unaffiliated voters? Well, I am assembling a coalition of voters from the, in fact, the Republican Party, Democrat Party, independents and unaffiliated. Affiliated. I travel our state every day. I'm in a different part of the state, and people come up to me and say, I'm an unaffiliated. I tried to vote for you in the primary, and I, I couldn't register the day of the election, but I am voting for you in November. I Yesterday, I was in prospect at the car show, and I had a gentleman say, I'm a Democrat, but I'm going to vote for you. I like what you're saying, because everybody goes to the gas station. Everybody goes to the supermarket and, and has to make those tough decisions. Everybody feels unsafe in their own homes and in their communities. Everybody understands that po things must change. We cannot elect the same people and expect a different outcome. If you want change, what would you do? What would be concrete policies to reduce inflation? Well, the first thing is to stop the spending. 
That's the first thing you do. We also would have to reverse some of the, the provisions of the in, what they call the Infa Inflation Reduction Act. I call it the Mansion Cinema Build Inflation Back Better Act, so, such as not fund the bank for the EPA, not fund the slush fund for the energy department that will turn into another Solinda, Solindra fiasco, not fund the 87,000 IRS agents some of them armed, who are going to be there to infringe on Americans' privacy and constitutional rights, to go after Americans who are earning up to 75, uh, from $75,000 and small businesses. Think about it. Uh, UConn Stadium holds 40,000 people. They just are proposed to hire 87,000 new IRS agents. That's well, a lot of agents, and I'm you, not sure why they need to be armed. Well, there's been a shortage of you know, IRS agents. You don't think we need more? 87,000 of them? Think about it, Emma. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But you don't think people aren't getting their refunds? You don't think we need to send They aren't there to for, refu section? for the purpose of refunds. They are there to root out what they consider Americans not paying their taxes. And Americans, you know, look, there are always people in any circumstance who may not have good intentions, but for the most part, Americans are fair and good people, and they they do pay their taxes. This these IRS agents are there to intimidate and and create um, people people uh, create uh, put people in a situation where they have to just admit to things that they may not have done just to get them off their backs. When it comes to climate change, would you support any measures on the federal level to help reduce what's happening well, you know, right now? Well, you know, one thing I can tell you about this bill, according to Bjorn Lomberg, who used the UN climate change model, this bill will only reduce climate change it was about nine one thousandths of a, of a degree of Fahrenheit in temperature at the best. That is virtually nothing. This will have no effect on climate change. It will have a reverse effect on, on inflation. It will not do anything that, that the Democrats have promised. It is, it is a smoke and mirrors. It is gaslighting the American people. But do you think we need other climate change policies? Obviously, we've had severe droughts here in Connecticut, and that's impacting farmers, other sort of extreme weather. Do you think that could be a concern for, for voters or Connecticut people in the state who are in agriculture? Agriculture, who are seeing those effects from that severe weather right now? Of course, of course, and we we need to develop alternatives as much as possible, but we can't do it in instead of what the energy products, the energy sources we have, because they're not at that point where they can 100% replace it yet. We cannot stop our economy cold. But do you think it's helping to take money away from the EPA? This is money that they've, that, that, it's a bank. They created a bank in the EPA. Do you think there's anybody in the EPA that knows anything about banking? This is, this is so much money and with no strings attached, no, no way of verifying what it will be used for. Mm -hmm. This is, this is basically another slush fund and it will end badly for the American people. These are hardworking Americans' tax dollars that will be squandered with no verification. So our last question here, you talk a lot about your background, how your family fled Cuba. You were a refugee here in the United States. So how do you think Connecticut can fit into current foreign policy discussions at the national level? Well, Connecticut, we we have a great product manufacturing base. We we are very we have a great defense industry. We we have a great brain trust here with the universities and the scientific developments and, and pharmaceutical companies. So we are very right we are positioned very well to do a lot of foreign trade and and so that's how I would see Connecticut fitting into the foreign policy discussion. Perfect. Well, thank you again so much for taking the time to be with us here today, Leora. I really appreciate it. Thank you very much for inviting me. Absolutely. And 
Uh, looking ahead, we had Richard Blumenthal, your opponent, here last week on The Real Story. We sat down with him to talk about this race. You can find that episode and all of our past Real Story content and conversations on Fox 61 Plus, on Roku, and Amazon Fire Stick. Now, that does it for us this morning on The Real Story, your place to hear directly from the people on your ballot and about the issues that matter to you ahead of the November election. If you want to watch these segments again, head to fox61.com or download the Fox 61 app and watch The Real Story here every Sunday at 10 a.m. Have a great rest of your morning.